Folks, before we start this episode, if you could do one thing, would you please hit that subscribe button? It really helps us out. I used to say it to my girlfriends, and I've said it to myself on occasion, when they were dating a guy who was less than what God had for them, they would settle for it because they thought that's all they could get. And I said, well, if you settle for that, it is all you're gonna get. Yeah. God, you gotta trust God for more than what you believe he can give you. We'll kick those tires and start that fake fire. It's time to <laughs> camp. Today's forecast, 100% chance of legendary. We welcome an Emmy Award winning television host, an actress, a singer, a writer, director, and someone with a major first world problem. You see, because as soon as she drops her next book, bound to be a New York Times bestseller, she won't be able to count all the New York Times bestsellers she has on just one hand. Really? Who am I speaking of? <laughs> the notorious KLG. Please welcome to the fire, the one and the only, Miss Kathy Lee Gifford. Wow, I'm impressed and I love what you've done with the place. Thank you. <laughs> you know, is, it's In funny. all these years, I've never gone camping like this. This is great. Well, and actually it's interesting because you and I met camping, right? Glamping. Oh, you said it, I didn't. It was supposed to be glamping, didn't end up that way, but yes, we met in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Never been there before uh, for a beautiful uh, uh, festival that we, I, I'd never been to one of those before. We uh, saw Laney, we saw uh, Maverick City. I mean, it was yeah, awesome. No, it was it was great. It, for me, it wasn't so much even the the music that which was wonderful. It was uh, during the day, just the interaction. It's always about the interaction with other people. That's how we met. That's right, and that was and, the highlight you would say of the conference, right? Well, it was for you. That's right. But uh, <laughs> well, actually, so I do have a question on that. So you have sat next to, I mean, heads of state the most famous people, all of the actors, producers, and you know, and you just, and it doesn't phase you. But I do have to ask, I mean, how do you feel now sitting across from me on a show that is adored by literally dozens of people around the world? <laughs> I'm humbled. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I mean, have you ever camped in the back of a bus? Um, that's none of your business. I was young and stupid and needed the money, okay? <laughs> We don't pay our guests, so for you young under 18 <laughs> campers, please fast forward through the next 10 minutes. Well, thank you so much. This is so cool. It is so so fun to see how the Lord works because I I just, uh, I, I adored you on TV and uh, it was so cool. And the second I told my mom, hi mom, that I was interviewed, <laughs> she flipped out and she had a million questions for me to ask you of which I said, well, that's in the follow-up interview because Bye. we got lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, normally we do this at the end, but I'm just excited about it. You have a new book coming out. Yeah. And it is fantastic. Tell us about the Jesus I know. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I, I have forgotten how many I have now because I started <laughs> writing them so long ago that I had forgotten that I'd already written one when I started the, the next one. It would have been maybe 10 years. And, and I said, oh, wait a minute. I did, ha I did have a book I wrote when I was 21 years old that, and, and it called the, the Quiet Riot by Kathy Epstein. That's how I was, I think, 20 years old when I wrote it. Never dreamed it would be published. This interesting things about book. I never write them with the thought, gee, I need, I want, I need to have a New York Times bestselling book. You know, even then I was walking with Jesus and I just felt like I was supposed to leave college. I was only, uh, what, three months away from graduating. And, three months? Mm -hmm, and I didn't want, I just said, no, the Lord doesn't want, I, I'm, no, I'm not supposed to. I left school and he said, right. Sat down in my apartment. I, was, knew, I, was, I knew I was gonna move to California. Sat down in my apartment, started writing on a legal pad with a big pen to which I do to this very day. It's the way I write everything. Broadway musicals, books, everything, and and uh, came up for air. At, at three weeks later, I just handed pages to my sister, and she typed them out. She was great at that. I couldn't do anything. I kept, I'm pathetic. So anyway, it was a book about the 19, growing up as a teenager in the 1960s, and I said one day, if God get, blesses me with a daughter, I'd love to have a um, a history of what that was like for me to be a young woman in the, the Jesus People Revolution time. Uh, that was actually mm. the 70s, but, but the 60s were th the most tumultuous time I can remember in my lifetime since, well, since now, till now, which is, it, it, it feels so much like it did that mm. just chaos, 
out of control, spinning down to, you know, a downward spiral down to hell, all, you know, all hell breaking loose. And, um, and, and I just thought, well, one day I'll be able to say, look, at this is what I went through, sweetie, when, as a teenager. So maybe you can, you know, the world changes. Um, trends change, politics change, people come and go. But the, the word of God remains forever. Bible says that as for God, his ways are perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. So I've tried to live my life with everything I do undergirding that. I've never separated the spiritual from the secular, ever. I don't think somebody says I'm a secular plumber, but I'm a spiritual guy on Sundays. When I, You either live and move and breathe and have your being in your savior every moment, every nanosecond of your life, or you sort of compartmentalize. Well, I think I'll go work Vegas now, but, but tomorrow I'll be in church. If you're gonna go work Vegas, be a light in Vegas. You know, be, that's your, that's your, my mission field was Vegas many times. My mission field was a movie set. So was my mine in college, by the way. Yeah, for different reasons. Yes. Everyone needs to hear you it. You were looking for God or some yes. sort of, uh, yeah. some semblance of, I was trying to share them. But um, yeah, so, uh, so this is I don't I don't keep track of of how many books I just know when I'm supposed to write one and what it's supposed to be about and then I just get on my knees and I start writing. So tell us what the Jesus I know started you you have all these wonderful friends and one thing I really appreciate about you is uh, just the when you open the book uh, it's not just you know a, a, a bunch of folks that like no one's ever heard of and not that that matters but it's so cool you're like these are very high profile in a lot of cases people you have megan kelly cynthia garrett you've got uh i mean uh jason kennedy you've got all these Kristen wonderful Chenoweth, yeah oh and jimmy her, allen her story was incredible and there it's one i love that um, you know being a you know attention deficit uh millennial it's fun to be able to read like oh i got five minutes i'm gonna read a, a chapter here right. and just inspire myself and all these people get so candid with you about their relationship with the Jesus that they know. And so the, how did their this all life start? Journey. Right. Yeah. You know what? I, I think that uh, I left, I told you that I left school I, and I, I was going to Oral Roberts University, which in Tulsa, and I met wonderful friends who are still my friends to this day. But culturally there, it was something, it was a place and I praise God, it's no longer. They've, they've truly evolved from what I understand. But at that time, it was very much a cookie cutter Christianity mentality of how to how to uh, bake uh, little Christian cookies to go out into the world to, to to go to Nigeria to go to Africa as missionaries. I'm 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 not kidding, but I am. I mean, nobody just said it had to be Nigeria. It just said it had to be sort of branded. Hmm. You had to go to places that were that's where Christians go. And I knew since I was a 12 year old brand new believer that my my ministry my walk with Christ was going to be through a mission field in the entertainment world where um, you know the world doesn't own the airwaves God who created air that we breathe owns it and I was told you can't be on a radio you can't be in movies you can't be in a, you, Christians don't do that and I said Christians should Jesus went to the other side Jesus went over to the Decapolis which is where all the pagans lived. He took his disciples there, got them unclean and dirty and ritually impure and said, love these people, love these people. And I just, I just thought it, we had it all but backwards in our, in our Western Christian culture. And we still do many, many places. I'm a Jew. My father was Jewish. My mother was, um, was a, a shiksa, like we call it in, in, in Yiddish. She was a, 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 a Gentile woman. My daddy became a Christian before anybody else in our entire family did. And he, at, at eight years old at a, at a black little church's vacation Bible school, never told any of us, but just lived his faith, such a godly man in every single day. My mother and my sister came to know Jesus um, uh, on television with a Bill, Billy Graham crusade. A month later, Billy Graham's first movie came out. It was called The Restless Ones. Where did I accept Jesus? A movie theater. Why? because that's where God was going to use me. Why? Because that's what he planted in my mother's womb, in my heart, when I was in that secret place that David talks about, in my mother's womb. God had a plan for me that one day, regardless of how much criticism I got from the church, 
He was going to use me to touch millions of people's hearts for his kingdom who would never pick up a Gideon Bible in a, in a, in a hmm. hotel and turn off any evangelist this fast unless they wanted to stop and make fun of them, which is easy to do, sadly, would never um, uh, go to a church because they, they or or pick up a Bible anywhere because they viewed the Bible as a 5,000 year old, I mean, decrepit, dusty, uh, a waste of time because they don't understand it. They don't know how it was written. They don't know why it was written and they don't believe it because because of the way it's been written and uh, was written is perfect in its original source. The, 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 the Hebrew in the Old Testament and the, I like to call it the Old Covenant and the New Testament, New Covenant is was written originally in Greek. And unless we study what it says in those original languages, we are not going to get the flawless word of God that's talked about in the scriptures. And if I'm going to base my whole life on something, Ryan, I want the truth. I'm a big girl. I can take the truth. But don't feed me, spoon feed me, pablum. Don't change one word which changes the whole meaning of something. Perfect example in the New Testament, the New Covenant, where it says, wives, submit to your husbands. Well, the word that is actually used in the Greek is, is, is a word called hippotasso in the Greek. These are the kinds of reasons I go to Israel to study this stuff. Because I said, I knew that it didn't say, oh, oh my gosh, we're going to have a fire. <laughs> what is cut that? for a moment or shall I fan with this? Because it's hot <laughs> as hell here. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we go take a quick second break while we cool <laughs> oh, and a down. A word from a, our sponsor. A word from our sponsor. <laughs> if we <No>. had one. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we have many sponsors. Well, miracle. Well, I've been doing packs with them. Now, <laughs> since it's getting a little toasty by the fire, we're going to take a quick break and bring you a special commercial from our partners at Laird Superfoods. I love them. Look, the last thing you need is for another ad to tell you how awesome a product is. You don't need to hear how smooth it is. Or how it features functional ingredients like lion's mane. And I would never presume that my words could sway you into purchasing this most delicious brew. But seriously, buy this coffee. It's amazing. And it just might change your life. Um, I want to get into it because you have some very uh, strong opinions and all, it's just fascinating to hear uh, you would actually just we I lost a bet I bet she couldn't throw in the Greek word um, for submit that was different and you managed to drop it in the conversation so sorry Mark yes. gets 10 bucks what was the Greek word you just threw out there hippo hippotasso which uh, basically um, be because the people that uh, were uh, translating it for King James uh, centuries centuries after Jesus was lived and walked on the earth and um, and at the, apparently these, these writers had never been to Israel, so they had no cultural references. They had no geopolitical understanding of what they were writing. Since. But anyway, Hippo Tasso, used the way it is in the New Covenant, says um, it means actually for, you know, first of all, I have to say women, it says women, uh, men. Let's, let's pull back a little. Men. Um, Love your wives the way Christ loved his church and died for her. You guys have it much harder than we do as women. We, it says, wives, love your husbands by leaning down and reaching up and lifting them up. Mm. That's what it means. It does not, it's the root word is the same as servile or servitude, but it does not, um, it does not translate in the usage that way. It's no, love them, be there, be there for them. When they're weary, reach down, lift them, keep them doing the right thing. Exactly the opposite of what Eve did in the garden. And that goes back, because in the, the word, and you probably know this better than I do, is so the word helpmate and all that back in the garden, it actually, from I've heard teachers say that that means actually someone like almost akin to uh, someone in battle with, like someone to like, it's so, it's such a vital partnership. Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't mean you're in your 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 little apron and, yeah. and serving. Although you know that's that's part of it too. 
but it means care for one another as as i care for you love one another. it's really just an extension of what jesus said when he said love your neighbor as you love yourself love god with all your heart your soul your spirit your strength everything you've kept the law if you keep those commandments you've kept you don't need to tithe your spiced garden that's the kind of law that the pharisees and the sadducees were putting on the uh, first century um, AD followers of Jesus, and they were called, or, or the Jews, the later ones, the ones who came to know Jesus, were called the Way, hmm. followers of the Way, and um, and and the word for church is ecclesia, and I don't know if I'm saying it properly, ecclesia, ecclesia, and it doesn't mean a building you go to. That's right. It means an assembling of, and it means movement, movement. We're not supposed to sit in our pews week after week after week which has become western christianity and 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 just hear the same old s stuff said by people who just graduated from a seminary somewhere who still believed that jesus was a carpenter the minute a pastor says jesus was a carpenter you know he has not studied the word of god in its original and i'm not saying judge them i'm just saying ask them don't you know the word for what jesus did in in the new covenant it's called tecton. That's what he and Joseph did for a living before Jesus started his his earthly ministry at the age of 30, which is when he became a rabbi. So what is tecton? I, I got to admit, I, until this moment, was under the impression that Jesus was, you know, carpenter has his stuff on Etsy. Um, you know what? Everybody does. And it's because that's what the, that's what the King James Version says. Every, so what is tecton? What, what was it? What's, what's a more act? This blew my mind. This is what set me on my new quest for truth. I went to Israel with a man named Ray Vanderlaan, who's a Dutch. I mean, he's not Dutch, but he's of Dutch descent from Holland, Michigan. He's a high school Bible a teacher. High school in Holland, Michigan. But he is one of the most world-renowned teachers. He's been to the Holy Land so many times. He can, and, he, and he takes you to these places where things actually happened. If you're wearing Gucci loafers at a, hot, at a hotel in Israel, you ain't going on a trip with Ray Vanderlaan <laughs> or anybody else that's going to actually teach you anything about it. You're going to be in a bus. You're going to get off. You're going to take your picture with a with camel on the Mount of Olives, and you're going to make it a Christmas card. You're going to go home and say, I've been to Israel. Don't waste your time going to Israel as a tourist. Spend your time going to Israel as a student of the word, a rabbinical student of the word, world, of the word. That's why I wrote Rock, Road, and Rabbi. The rock is Jesus, of course. The road is the Holy Land. And the rabbi is not a particular rabbi. It's rabbinical teaching. Mm -hmm. So when these guys that were translating, you know, the Bible into the Hebrew and the, and the uh, Greek uh, said, okay, uh, Jesus was a, a carpenter. And they, because they read the word tecton in Greek, and that's what they assumed it meant. Because tecton in in um, the Greek means uh, um, founder hmm. or creator slash builder. Hmm. Well, we know that God Almighty was the creator of all things. Jesus was there at creation. The Word was with him at creation. So um, Jesus was a creator. And it says builder. That's the last part out of it. And they said, oh, he was a carpenter like us. Well, back in first century AD, Israel, which was called Palestine at the time, um, there was no buildable wood. There were trees kind of like this. There were balsam trees. There were a fig eucalypt, uh, fig, um, uh, fig ones. There were uh, olive trees. There were, you know, those, that kind of thing, sycamores. But you can't build anything but that. You can make bowls out of it. You can make sticks. You can build with sticks. But but a, a, anybody that was doing actual building of, of, of that would withstand the desert, which is what Israel was at the time, there were no buildable trees. Remember, it talks so much about how uh, the, the trees that, um, that uh, were used uh, for to build all the palaces and, and all of uh, the different things that were the temples. Everything was sent by by raft, the cedars of Sina, of um, the cedars of Lebanon. So Hiram, King Hiram, made that deal with Solomon, remember? And he floated them down. Uh, he would cut down the cedars of Lebanon, which are magnificent trees, m cut them down, make them into rafts, float them along the Via Maris, which is this tr this this ribbon of a road that exists today. 
You wow. stand on some of the mountains in, in uh, Israel today and you look down along the Mediterranean coast, there's the Via Maris. It means the road of the sea. And it's the ancient trade road. And that's how all those, that, all the wood that was used basically to, um, for, for decoration, for decoration within the, the, the buildings because wood would not last in Israel. What lasts in Israel? What you see everywhere you go. Rock. 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 Israel is a desert and full of rock. The only tr There's many trees there now, but they've all been planted since Israel became a nation in 1948. Wow. Why? To fulfill scripture, the land shall become a garden. Wow. It'll bloom. It will bloom. And it did not bloom that way. Uh, until until that time when God called back, as he's told in scripture and prophecy for centuries, his people back from every corner of the world. So um, Jesus was a stonemason. And a when stone I was told mason. that, I went, what? Are you kidding me? And I remember saying to Ray, Ray, if we're wrong about something as simple as that, what else are we wrong about? And he gets this twinkle in his eye and he goes, everything so basically it's morpheus gave you the red pill in the matrix and you basically woke I, up and i woke up i woke up to oh my god i've been spending my entire belief all my system my whole life learning something with a with a with a curtain masked basically but my whole face especially my eyes and my heart and my heart wanted to be opened my yeah. heart wants to be open to truth i want revelation in my life I want, I want to follow in the real footsteps, not some path somebody else carved out centuries later who'd never ever been to Israel. Honestly, it's just, it's the biggest waste of time to read bad translations of the Bible. Because then what we do after we learn it, then, we, then we, we study it, we learn it, we memorize it, then we start quoting it and trying to apply it to our lives. And we, and we don't have any power in our life. We figured out, wait a minute, Lord, I've done this, 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 and this. Why don't, why isn't anything changing in my life? The power comes from the word. But if we don't know the word, we don't have the power. And that's been Satan's great lie to the Western church. He's even used the Bible to lie to us. Wow. So this is interesting. If, so you, one could argue theologically, whether Jesus was a carpenter or a stonemason, you might the someone go, okay, theologically, whatever. He was a he was a craftsman, no big deal. But the point being, all right, if there are minute details like that, and even skept, I've heard secular scholars like Bart Ehrman say, yeah, like yeah, there's discrepancies. Even how Judas died are different, in, and Peter says in Acts versus how he died in uh, Matthew. But what are some broader like what are the you mentioned wives and husbands, and so there's a because that verse has been used to really mess up relationships oh, for years. Oh, but how many women have stayed oh. in abusive relationships, whether they're married or not. If they're Christians, they're usually married. <laughs> but abusive said, I've got to stay here because Jesus said I have to submit. Paul said I have to submit. No. If you study the Torah and and the rabbinic law in the, uh, the Mosaic law, they, that's why God created de de um, divorce, was to protect women, hmm. to protect women from abusive men. And, and that's my biggest thing today, other than getting people to de look deeper into the, the true meaning of scripture, is, to, is to, for Christians, Western Christians or Christians anywhere to understand that our faith comes from Judaism. We are, gra I'm not grafted into it. I'm a Jew by blood, by birth. But you, if you're not a Jew, if, uh, are grafted in as a believer to the, to the root of Judah. And so you began, but, but, but Christians today don't even understand that every important thing that ever happened in Jesus's life, in the scriptures, in the new covenant, when we learned about his life on earth, every single amazing thing that happened to Jesus happened during one of the festivals, the Jewish festivals. Mm -hmm. Jew, the only ones we know about are, is Passover. Passover or Easter. Well, Easter is not a, a, is not a, um, a Jewish festival. Not big in Jewish. Uh. The, but Jesus was crucified on the Passover, yes. But three days later, and those are Hebrew days, not, we count it as uh, um, uh, sunset. 
to the next, you know, it's, it's a different way of looking at a day, a yom, Y-O-M. And that's another way that we've completely We're going to have up. all these new words that we're learning with KLG in the notes too. So be a quiz. I already found the, was it hip, what was the first one? Hippo Hippotasso. Hippotasso. H-I-P-P-O-T-A-S-S-O, I think. Yes. Wow. So you just crushed the uh, Old Testament spelling bee. Well, I'm just, I'm fascinated by this. And every time I learn something new, it just, my, 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 it just sets my my faith on fire again. I want to know more. I want to know more. But there, I, w I had not finished this point, and it was important. I don't even know where We're I was. We're talking Easter and the ho every something Easter. big. Easter. Yeah, yeah. What happened on Sunday morning was a festival of first fruits. First fruits, which was a harvest uh, festival. That's when everybody was to come to after Passover, which was when, when we know that, the, that, that Moses told the people, put the blood of the lamb on your homes and the, and, the, and, the de and the angel of death will pass over you. You're about to be redeemed. We're about to be freed from slavery and taken to the promised land, right? So um, that's what happened on, on the first uh, Passover. And that's why they still to this day revere it and follow it. Uh, but three days later was something called first fruits. And that's when all the people that were already assembled in, in Jerusalem for the festival would bring their gifts to the temple of their first wine, their first oil, their first lamb, their first, in other words, give unto God the best that you have and he will bless your next harvest. Your, he will bless the work of your hands. He will bless your, the, your womb. You will have many children. They will prosper, be fruitful and multiply God's kingdom. It's all there so we understand how God wants to bless us. But to get back to the yom, people say to me all the time, why should I believe the Bible? It's so full of, it's, it, does, it can't live alongside science. And I always love to do this because I'm no scholar by any means, but I study with them. And they'll go, well, look at the, you know, God, like, like, well, first of all, it says in Genesis, the very first book that God made the world in six days and then rested. Um, so, I, a day is 24 hours and we know from science it's billions and billions and billions of years it's, it's almost un, unrecordable because you get how do we know and I said oh I totally agree with you and they go what do you mean but you're, you're, you're a Christian you're a devout Christian you believe the word is is the divinely inspired word of God got the Bible and I go yes I do because I know what yam means that's the Hebrew word for day but if you understand the complexities of the word yam and the nuances it's you have to understand Hebrew to know how it's used in a sentence, to understand what, what kind of yom. Now, a yom, in, in the basic understanding of Hebrew, is um, a period of time with a distinct beginning and a distinct end. But it can be a 24-hour period, or it can, be, it can be unfathomable, because God is God. A day is 10,000 years to him. So, so how do we know what it means in Genesis. For me, the way it's settled for me, we know a solar day by what? The sun. Well, Genesis says the sun and the moon didn't show up until the fourth day, the fourth yom of creation. So we wouldn't know. So it's not a solar day. Yeah. Wow. Is it in Yom Kippur, is that, what does that mean? Or day of is atonement. So that is a 24 hour is that that, a, that is a 24 hour day of set aside for um for fasting and prayer to remind everybody that um of what used to happen on the day of atonement in ancient days um, um it was the only day of the entire year where the, the, the high priest uh ironically it was caiaphas at the time that jesus was was uh murdered the high priest that's the only time he could go into the holy of holies uh in the temple there was a curtain there and only one day out of the year could, could the holy, could the high priest take in a lamb, a perfect, perfect, unblemished lamb, and sacrifice it for the sins of all the people. Now on the day that Jesus was crucified, it was three o'clock in the afternoon when he finally gave up his spirit. Um, and that was the second time that the shofar would be played. There were two sacrifices each day, nine o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the afternoon in the temple. But what happened, the Bible said? Total blackness took over the land. There was an earthquake so violent that what did it do? It cut the Holy of Holies curtain down from the top down to the bottom and shredded it forever. Wow. And um, that's, that's, that's the Day of Atonement. 
And, and yet Jesus never had to be done again because Jesus made the sacrifice for all time for all people on that one day. The Old Testament is so gnarly. Is, is this also the same one where they would tie a bell to the high, because I, I remember something from this where when they would send the priest into the, like, the innermost part that no one could go in. Except That's the, the Holy of Holies. And they would do a bell or something to know that they're still, because no one else could go in and you wouldn't know if the person was still alive or not. You know what? I've, I've heard that. I would have to ask a rabbi okay. or a great, great, I mean, I just always that struck me sense. as like, that's how serious well, it was Well, you know to what? People used to fall down dead if they touched the, the ark yeah. or if they if they did certain things that, that, that God said, do not do this. He's not doing it because he wants to say, because remember, I'm God and you... you know, He's not like that. Yeah. He's all loving, all faithful from everlasting to everlasting. He wants his people to be blessed. Some things are holy. Holy means set apart for sacred use. The word in Hebrew is kadosh. Kadosh, it's a beautiful, that's why you hear holy, holy, holy. Anytime there's something's done three times, it's for emphasis, like it doesn't get holier than this. Wow. And it's so we don't lose our way, so we are, um, fearful, not in a fearful way of, oh my God, I'm going to get killed. Oh, no, 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 I need to worship my, my Lord in holiness. Fear is another one of the words, Ryan, that has been used so powerfully by Satan to destroy God's kingdom. People are afraid of God. And the only people truly in, in, in all of, of, of the Bible that, are, that should fear God were God's enemies, those who had chosen to be against God. You know, uh, they're the ones who should fear him in the way the word yire, Y-I-R-E-H, is, is used in, in, in the scriptures. It's used, you see it a lot. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Blah, 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 the fear, and they, I'm fearfully and wonders, wonderfully made. No, nine, more than, I don't even know what the percentage is, but most of the time, read the whole scripture. Like the one I just said in in uh, in the Psalms, I am fearfully and wonderfully won wonderfully made. Wondrously made uh, is the is the the way most people understand it. What what was fearful about it? Why would God be fearful of making us in my, the mother's womb? God's not afraid of anything. Fear the other word, the other usage of it in the Hebrew, and the most dominant one means wonder, awe, worship. Mm. That's what. So every time somebody quotes that, remember it does not mean that. So fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom would be better uh, a reverence, a reverence and a wonder and an awe of Him. Mm. See how it changes everything. See how when you understand that Jesus was a stonemason, you'll never again, ever again, read the test the stories where Jesus found the woman. They found the woman caught in adultery. And Jesus says to everybody around him, let you who are without sin cast the what? The first stone. Not tree. Where it says the cornerstone, that, the rock, mm. that the stone that was rejected has become what? The cornerstone. You know. Um, it's all there in plain sight. It's all there. Every, Jesus talked in that imagery of stone and rock because he spent 30 years of his life with it, honing it, cutting it, fixing it, setting it. It makes the scriptures, it, I could cry. It makes them come alive in a way that lights are lukewarm, but backwards life and, and culture and ways of doing things. Sets it just on its proverbial donkey and says, why are you doing it this way? I've shown you the way to worship. I've shown you the way to follow me. I've shown you the way to, to, to represent me in this world. Mm. And, and, and we don't even have, we don't even study our guidebook. We have a GPS for everything in this world except for the word of God. And mm. he gave it to us all those centuries ago. It's called his word in its original source. The only Bible I know of that is written by, by messianic rabbis is one that's been recent. And it's so, so popular now, it's hard to get, but you can order it. It's called the Tree of Life. And it'll be a little difficult for Western Christians to read originally, because it'll say the Hebrew name for God. And it will say, it'll do certain spellings of things. And it will, and it will use Hebrew terms that you will grow to love. Mm. Jesus for me will always be um, Yeshua now. 
Hmm. Yeshua. That's his Hebrew name. Um, Mary, the mother of Je Miriam. It's Miriam. That's beautiful. Uh huh. And I, I'm learning new things every single day, and I, I get carried away. And you have all these questions you want to ask me, but uh, I don't care about talking about my life. Man, I love your passion for this. Uh, it is so cool, and honestly, uh, I can't wait to go home and uh, and read, and also impress my friends now too. When I <laughs> I'm gonna wait till the next time someone drops the carpenter line, and I'll get that. But or or just say, have a nice yum. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna throw that out, and they're like, oh, he's so cultured, you know. So obviously, there must be a million things that you've taken from your new lens of looking through scripture, uh, but what are one or two maybe the biggest things that you think theologically have changed and are implications for us if we were to read scripture through this new lens that we should do or that we should take away from this that are that are game changers it's a game changer when you start studying um the festivals in the jewish faith and why the people did it and if jesus was a rabbi he was he was a hardcore rabbi he kept the word perfectly. He said, I, I've kept it. He came to fulfill the world, the word. And he said, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. How do we have it? Like in John 10, 10, Zoe, the word abundantly is Zoe, life, Zoe, life abundantly. So you cannot contain it. Everything changes when you understand. People think, well, Jesus was born in December and it's Christmas time. That again, like Easter was basically um, a, a pagan festival at the time, which was a solstice. It was the uh, the the, fine, the, you know, the shortest day of the year with the sun, and 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 culturally we've just sort of added on to that through the years, and we've lost the re the, the Jewish thing that was happening during that time of the year. First of all, we know that Jesus was not born in December, because I've been to Israel so many times. You got to pack for for wintry weather there. It we, they don't have like you know blizzards like we yeah. have, but. It's there are no flocks in the in the, no sheep in the in the fields then, they aren't there. It's the it's the, it's the winter season. They are held in caves, throughout that that season. Wow. And um so so the, the the shepherds could not have come during that time. There would have been no flocks in 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 the fields. So then why do we do that? Well, here is this will rock your world. What goes on in the in the uh, Jew Jewish faith? in December is the festival of Hanukkah. What is that? Festival of lights. And they talk about the time when the, uh, when the Jews were saved by the Maccabees from, from foreign rule. Israel's been dominated so many times, you should read it. It's just a fascinating history of how God has, has, has um, been faithful to sustain his refuge through the centuries, not, notwithstanding the Holocaust. You know, even when the Holocaust took those millions and millions of Jews, those m millions of Jews ha had already gone to other other points in the world. They call it, I think it's the dystopia, the sto dystopia, and they all were called back. Not all, but that God called His people back, His remnant, to 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 take the land, and 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 basically garden it, garden it like we were originally supposed to do. So, city of uh, it's the uh, festival of lights, Hanukkah. Now think about Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. My word is a lamp to your feet. Jesus was, hold on to your girdle. Hold on to your spanks. <laughs> Jesus was conceived in December. So in a way he was born. The light of the world came into Mary's, Mary's um, womb during that time. And, and she then six months later, remember, Zechariah was in the, she went to visit her, her, her sister, her uh, cousin Elizabeth, and the baby within her uh, was John the Baptist. Oh, I mean, oh, it's just so exciting. It's so exciting. That's a whole other story. You can read all about that in, in our Rock Road and Rabbi book. But then, uh, what happened later? Jesus, when was he born then? Well, do the nine months thing. Follow the science, we always say. In September, or depending on the, the Hebrew calendar in the year, uh, he was born uh, during the festival of Sukkot. S-U-K-K-O-T, I believe. I, I could be wrong about this stuff, you guys. Check it out. I learned this stuff, but then I, you know, I go on to learning other stuff, and I, I should be more prepared. 
But I know that the festival of Sukkot is when, even today, if you go to Israel, you go to other like Orthodox neighborhoods, you'll see little settees, little um, uh, uh, shelters built onto their regular homes. That's when the Jews celebrate worldwide that the God's faithfulness to them in the wilderness when they had when they were um, released from from uh, the, the reign of Pharaoh. 400 years of slavery. They were, they were, they were taken away by Moses, the most unlikely of all um, heroes in the Bible. One of the most unlikely, and and taken. You know, we know what happened at the Red Sea, and we know how they got to the Promised Land. And uh, it's just for people who say the Bible is boring, they have never read it. So they have never it. read it the way you should. There's everything in that, and they don't sugarcoat it. They'll write about David murdering and committing adultery, and they'll, then they'll talk about his, his redemption. But, but redemption means nothing if you haven't sinned. So the, the Bible is very clear about how we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Hmm. And, and, and it makes you appreciate redemption when you know the depths that you yourself are personally capable of falling. I, I just, I love this about you because, you know, I have, and again, and I'm going to, I'm going to force you to answer some questions now, but I love that you can tell this is so passionate that you don't want to talk about anything else. This, this is your, your first love, as I often hear you say. And that is evident because most everyone else like, well, of course, let me tell you about all my life lessons. And I love that I have to pry those out because you're just so on fire for something that you love so dearly. And, um, you know, and if the commandment is, you know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, well, that is uh, effusing out of every pore, and not just because it's 102 degrees in here, uh, <laughs> but on there. But I, I thank, thank you for you, sharing right. that. My and, pleasure. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, well, the we'll, truth is, though, honey, when, when I go to glory, Jesus is going to say, hey, way to go with those Emmys. Oh, big fan. A big fan. <laughs> He's not good. I, I saw it. It was great. You know, good job. Oh, and that walk of fame. You got you got your star, you know. I want to worship at the one who, the feet of the one who made the stars and the heavens and all the cosmos and, and left all the glory of God in the heavens, the glory of every weekend. Where we live and what we experience is, we, is so small in terms of all of God's mm. worlds. And I say it plural because it's going to be limited to one tiny little planet and one solar system and one the Milky Way. I don't think so. But he left glory to come here as a baby. And that's a whole great story about how being wrapped in swaddling clothes is exactly what they, the, 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 the priests did out in the fields in Bethlehem. Why did they do that with the lambs? Because the lambs were born for the same reason that Jesus was, to be sacrificed three miles away in the temple for the sins of the people. When lambs are born, they're very, they're very, they're um, unsteady, unstable, and they, they can fall, and they, they, they're built, they're born, and then they stand and start to walk right away. And so that so the, the priests, the priests, the shepherds that were in the fields during that time, they weren't just, they were no ordinary shepherds. They were Levitical priests. Remember when God divvied up the land, the promised land, and the area like around, is this radius around the, t the temple? was for the Leviticals, the Levites. They're the only ones that didn't have any land given to them as a tribe. They were, they were told to live there and, and tend it for the temple's sake. Well, those were Levitical priests. And they knew that they were to take those lambs and wrap them in cloth called what? Swaddling clothes. Mm. To prepare them for sacrifice. Mm. Not three miles away on the same mount where Abraham held the, 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 uh, the knife, prepared to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. Same rock where Jesus was, where um, obviously God provided the sacrifice, the, the ram, because God was going to fulfill his promise to Abraham and Sarah to have their child. But that's also where the Dome of the Rock is, the Muslim, the, the uh, Aqsa Mosque, that's there. But that is where David built Solomon built the temple. The original temple was right there. And that's also where Jesus was crucified. 
Well, we have a strict policy. You can only blow our minds for so long. Um, and uh, we're going to have to have you back on. You're going to have to come camp with us again because we're going to do, do a, a, a three-hour Joe Rogan-style session because my mind is blown here. I, I do need to get a few wisdom nuggets from you. Um, and uh, we're going to have to do something that I think you and I are not spiritually gifted with. We're going to have to try. Because a, a wise mentor once told me that you got to respect someone's time. It's a huge deal. Got to get them on time. I don't know who that was, but if you're watching. <laughs> Kelly Ripa. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember, I don't remember who it was, but uh, so we're gonna get some of that uh, those nuggets here. So we're gonna do a little okay. bit of a lightning round here. But you're right. highly you're highly quotable. Uh -huh. uh, I love this about you. Um, and so I want to topically just ask you if you were really big on life lessons and wisdom. That's what a campfire's for. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from you: um, "People who settle for what they get get what they deserve." Um, if you settle for what yeah, you've got, if you settle for what you've got, you deserve um, what you, you get. deserve what you get. Tell me about settling both. Have there been times in your life and then also um, to people out there right now who might be tempted to settle? Um, I think I think it comes down to self-worth. So many people feel badly about their lives, about their circumstances, about their, they, they don't value themselves the way God does. They don't see themselves the way God sees them. Therefore, they don't act like a daughter or a son of the king. They don't know they're wrapped in a robe of righteousness. They feel like they're a beggar on the side of the road in rags. So when they get a, a crumb, a crumb they settle for it when God has a banquet waiting for them mm. I used to say it to my girlfriends and I've said it to myself on occasion when they were dating a guy who was less than what God had for them they would settle for it because they thought that's all they could get and I said well if you settle for that it is all you're gonna get yeah God you got to trust God for more than what you believe he can give you mm. yeah Another one, um, I think this one is, and I'm, I guess I'm going to butcher all your quotes here, but I love them, um, about real love is saying I'm sorry 10 times a day. Uh, if, if that's all that's required. It, yeah. yeah, because that came from that movie, Remember Love Story. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Really? No, that's <laughs> fa fa fake news. As <laughs> fake, that's, That was the original. You want to look back? No, fake news was Satan in the garden. But it, it, it goes that far back. But never having to say you're sorry. I taught my children to say, please, thank you, and I love you, and I'm sorry. Those were from day one. They're all interrelated. All interrelated. You've got to say you're sorry, and you've got to mean it. You can't say I'm sorry just because you're going to get something else. You know, I'll tell you a very funny sorry story about my daughter. Uh, Who she, just got married, right? She just got married this past, well, she'd been married a year and a half. She had her That's party, right. her celebration this past weekend. It was so much fun. That's why if I'm bumping around, mama did a little celebrating, if you know what I mean. Four days of it. <laughs> but it is like, um, she, we had a house in Colorado and uh, it was a Christmas time. And my daughter was maybe four and, and she's, um, she's very precious, beautiful heart. But she we i had invited a man to come a lovely man lovely man to come and um play piano at our at play christmas carols for the yeah. you know and, and and hymns and all of that just in background tinkle away and you know keep it the mood going well the man got there and he was extremely obese didn't matter child of god we didn't he sat there lovely man said hello gave him a nice hot cocoa whatever he's sitting down at the piano and he's playing and all of a sudden, my Cassidy goes over to him and she goes, you had too many hot dogs. <laughs> and one of my friends heard her say it. Oh. She comes over to me and she goes, Kathy, I'm, I'm so upset. Cass Cassidy just said this to this man. And I was mad at her. I said, Cassidy Gifford, that is not nice. You go over to that man right now and tell him you're sorry, honey. You tell him you're sorry. She looks at me. Okay, mommy. She goes over to him. She goes, I saw where you had too many hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the sorry in there, I guess. Um, we got to watch out how we say I'm sorry. Pick, uh, picking uh, a mate. Um, ah. Yeah, I mean, I know that that's a whole nother topic we go on there. But Kathy Lee's top level wisdom um, on for what you see, and especially in today's day and age on because people shouldn't settle. And I've heard it said that better be lonely on a Friday night than married to the wrong person. Um, and I'd rather be single for the rest of my life than ever again be married in a, in a horrible marriage, which I was my first marriage, terrible. My second one was great for a long, long time until it was almost impossible because of my husband's infidelity. But even God got us through even that. 
but because, but God God understood Frank as a godly man. He, he look what the Bible talks about um, David being a man after God's own heart, and look what he did. Oh yeah, and look what he did. Now, so my husband was uh, a, a a good man who did a stupid thing, yeah, and almost lost everything because of it. So yeah, um, yeah, I I have a lot of things that come to me. The latest one for the last like 10 years because it's been trying it's been i have big choices to make in life and everything and the lord gave me a long a couple of things one he said there are kathy there are no crumbs on my table hmm. i will use everything that falls down and is just lying on the floor as if it's useless it's not to god there are no crumbs on my table and that goes back to the scripture about how he will take your mm -hmm. ashes and make beauty out of them and the other one, the one Hoda loves so much, and the one people quote to me, though, I'll be walking down the street, they'll go, my joy is non-negotiable. Thank you, Kathy. You know, oh. My joy is non-negotiable. Uh, in Nehemiah 8.10, it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's the one most people quote. But right before it are two, are three words. Three words that you never hear. Do not grieve. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And what was actually happening at that time, and that's why it's in Nehemiah, some of the Jews have been called back from from um, uh, one of the foreign countries that they'd been, you know, taken to after they'd been uh, uh, decimated as a nation in Israel. They were taken to Assyria. They were taken to Persia. They were taken to Babylon. They were, you know, what they're all they're all close by, but far enough away from home that you're going to miss it. People like Daniel. People like Esther. That's all when they were in exile, you know. So anyway, um, the Jews had returned from exile in one of the foreign countries they'd been taken to. And they were back. And when they arrived, the temple was decimated. The, the, it, was, it was in ruins. And the walls all around Jerusalem that had been so tenderly and meticulously built were, were gone. They were, they were gone. And, and just ruins. And the people were losing heart. They were losing heart. We'll never have what we once had. The glory of the Lord no longer lives here. God can't bless this place. This place is a place of jackals and, and, and thieves. Mm. And, and so they were, they were desolate. But God said he would build it. He would help them rebuild. And Nehemiah was trying to encourage the people by saying, do not grieve. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He will, it, by his strength, not by our power, by his strength and power, we will rebuild. And, and then he said, go, today go and feast. Go and drink, feast, and share and prepare some for those who have nothing. And we will rebuild. And I think the number, you can check this everybody, my, my idea is right, and sometimes my details are a little off, but, the, but I think it was after that, 53 days, days later, the wall was rebuilt unheard of and it was rebuilt while they were holding a, a, a weapon in one arm and building with the other because hmm. the people that had taken the land after the Jews left had didn't want to give it back and they were being persecuted and attacked and everything and they they, they weren't like oh this is we're having a picnic and a party let's build one rock at a time no it was complicated it was complicated they had they couldn't sleep they'd have to They'd have to take turns sleeping with a, with a weapon. Then they'd, they'd turn, take turns building with a weapon. They worked it out because God gave them wisdom how to build it. God gave them strength, uh, probably of the Holy Spirit for sure, where they could kept going. And, and he gave them joy in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. I get joy from my work. A lot of people try to avoid work. Work is so critical to our self-esteem, mm. especially if we're doing the Lord's work. Well, all work is the Lord's work. I should take that back. All, do um, the Lord, the, the Bible says, whatever it is you do, don't give it a secular or a spiritual title. Just do it as under the Lord. Mm. Do it the way if you were serving at Jesus' feet, you would do it. I just got some sad news that our camping trip is going to be over almost soon here. But I have, uh, I, I have two really quick questions for you. Um, and I love it because you called me out on this very quickly. I said, good luck. And you said, uh-uh, no luck. No coincidences, and God works for all these things. So, I, because the Hebrews have no word in their language for coincidence, yeah, because it does uh, not exist. He's either sovereign God or not God at all. And don't you worry about them talking about time. 
I'm going on yam time. Which I was is, about to say, do we, how many yams we have? We're not in a solar day right now. Uh, that's so right. Well, ahead. it feels like we're very solar right now. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm just curious because one thing that I know a lot of um, Christians struggle with and is this the holding the tension between God is in control and, and even reading your book, there are these stories where, like with Cynthia Garrett's, where this redemption, you're like, oh my gosh, right? right? And then you look at um, uh, Christian's opening story about the tragedy that befell her. Right. And you go, Christian Chenoweth. Yes. And I go, God, like, how do, there are no coincidences. And I also, I, I have a tough time because I don't think God authors, obviously, any of these terrible things. So it how is do you, never his will that we suffer. So ever. how do you reconcile um, the no coincidences? I, I'm asking you the tough question we all wrestle with why bad things happen to God's people. Yeah. Well, it isn't God's fault. And when people blame God, I go, wait a minute. God created a garden for us originally. God created paradise for us. Why? So that we would walk in the garden with him, so that we would communicate. He loved talking in the cool of the yam with them, with, a, uh, with um, uh, Adam and Eve. He loved fellowship. He is a God of fellowship and community. He's not a cosmic um, entity up there that, that doesn't understand us. He's an individual custom made God, although he never changes. We are all so different, made in the image of God, and he loves everything and everyone he creates. And so I just, I find joy in that. And as I just said, the joy of the Lord is non-negotiable. So if someone's hurting right now, it's been a terrible last year, things, a lot of going on there. How do you, what do you say to them about just because obviously God doesn't change. I would say to them, it is not God's will that you suffer, but it is God's will that he will use and it is promise. He will use your suffering to make you a better, stronger, more alive human being than you were before the suffering. And, and God's word is full of stories like that. My life is full of stories like that, just personally and everybody I know. I came through my broken marriage, a stronger human being. I came through hurricanes, stronger, more beauty in my, my home because God literally took down trees. And I went, whoa, that's my view? He, he had to take down trees for me to see that I was living in paradise and didn't even know it. Wow. Oh. So I just say, God's not finished with me yet. He's not finished with you. He's not finished with anybody that's watching. He loves you. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love is everlasting. And, and he, if you seek him, you will find him. If, uh, if you um, long for him, your desire in your heart, he says he will give you the desires of your heart. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add unto you everything else, every yam of your life. That is amazing. Well, since we're wrapping up here, uh, thank you so much, Kathleen. I do want to make sure we do a final plug because um, I'm just a big fan of this book. Um, I I love the conversations. It has so many amazing people in it. Um, it comes out in uh, late November, I believe. Or... I, I think the, the release date is uh, November 30th, but you can pre-order it. Yes, pre-order it. It's called it, The please. Jesus I Know. I think, it, I think it'll surprise people, don't you? Oh, it's, yeah. And essentially, essentially, Kathy Lee publishes these, I won't call them a transcript, these conversations with people, everyone from uh, Megyn Kelly and Jason Kennedy, and um, it's just... Jimmy uh, Allen. Jimmy, it's wonderful. And, and as people from Scientologists, atheists, brokenhearted Catholics, confused Baptists, people that, uh, but they they're all on their own unique personal journey with Jesus. And we tend to judge so much in Christendom. Well, you don't worship like I do. Well, you don't go to my church. Well, you've got that all wrong. And, 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 and as a result, we are lost doing the work we think we're supposed to do, which is judgment, which is the exact opposite of what we're supposed to do. Jesus didn't say judge others as I judge them. He said, love one another as I have loved you. Leave the judgment to Jesus. He's the only one worthy. And thank God he's the one that holds the keys. Amen. The I one who died for us. This book, I think, is just so relevant right now, too, in a, in a time where we can't have honest dialogue anymore. And that's one thing I love about this book. You interview Scientologists. You interview people who, who don't share the same belief in Jesus the same way, but you have an amazing conversation, and everyone unites around this human experience of the tragedies and the sufferings and everything that people go through. And, and who Jesus was. Yeah. Every one of them has an 
fascinating take on Jesus. And every one of them are people that I took to Israel. And everything changed once they went there. Well, pre-order the book, The Jesus I Know. It will be her sixth New York, New York Times bestselling <laughs> book. So we will now need You're a prophet. two hands. That's right. <laughs> Name it and claim it. We have been camping with the notorious KLG. Kathy, we drove 3,000 miles to be here, and there's no one else we would probably drive that far for. So. Oh, you're on your way to Bubba Watson, and you know it. That's true. See you soon, <laughs> Bubba. Thanks for camping, folks. God bless y'all. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us, folks. If you want to help us out, and we're confident you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel. And if you ever feel like just listening to these, you can check us out on all major podcast streaming platforms by just searching for I Went Camping With. And there, you should also subscribe. Thanks again, folks.